So I've been watching a lot of Alex Bregman YouTube videos recently and I learned a ton. Do yourself a favor, if you're not subscribed to him on YouTube, go over there now and do it because he's posting a ton of great hitting content. He kind of gives you a glimpse into his thought process, the cues that he's using when he's hitting and a lot of great stuff from a great MLB hitter. Why wouldn't you do that if you're a coach or a dad or a parent of a young baseball player? Great stuff over there. But in this video, I wanna talk about a drill that I came up with from watching his videos over the last, I was gonna say a couple months, but it's been years. Actually, Antonelli Baseball on YouTube, another great channel you should follow. He posted a video of Bregman back when he was in college about fielding, and Bregman was coming up to the ball, and then he actually created space and got around it. Really great video, I'll leave a link down below there. But I've been learning from Alex for a long, long time. But in this video, I came up with a hitting drill that I think would benefit a lot of younger players. So I want your feedback though, hitting coaches out there, uh, parents of young players, give me your feedback on this drill and what you think, okay? Because what I've noticed in Bregman's videos is that he has a very unique thought process about hitting, the way he approaches it. A lot of the times you'll see him talk about keeping his chest, he wants to keep his chest like almost parallel to the batter's box, the other batter's box, right? The left-handed batter's box. So you'll see him a lot of time, he does this move like this. He like kind of shows his hands in front of his chest real high and inside like this, but he almost wants to keep this shoulder from rotating. But he's got a very short swing. I don't know if short's the right word, but a very compact swing. I think short is the right word because he doesn't have a big load. You know, he's not like getting super scapped up back here. He's not like pointing this barrel up top here. You know, he doesn't have a huge load. And then he also doesn't have a huge finish. Like, it almost seems like he's trying to anti-rotate out front. Like, he doesn't want to go too far. He doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't have a big follow through like that. And I think that helps him, that cue helps him. Obviously he does, he rotates in the swing. But I think those cues help him not fly open, right? And when you're facing major league hitting and you got fast guys, you really got to get the bat to it and get through it, right? Short to it. And I always used to say short to it, long through it, but. Bregman is actually short and short. He, now he's not cutting off his swing. You don't see him like cutting off his swing here. He gets extended, but he doesn't, he doesn't have a big rotation after his swing. So I got to thinking, and you know this drill, this is not the drill that I came up with, but you know the drill, you see guys of all different ages, they take a one-handed bat or their bat and they choke up, whatever it is, and they swing and they really focus on being over exaggerated with this wrist and staying under it and they kind of stop the rotation out in front here the problem with this drill it's not there's really no problem it's a great drill i use the drill i love the drill but where there can be an issue with that drill is especially with a weaker or younger player so like high school and below some high school guys and below you know a lot of one-handed bats are too heavy for them right the the other thing is when you're doing that drill. I like that you stop out in front and are thinking about staying here, but you could see my shoulders already clearing the way. So I'm opening up, right? It's a great drill to work on or identify and help the guys who kind of roll the wrist too early, right? They start to roll the wrist. Rolling the wrist in a baseball swing is a big issue, right? A lot of guys do it. So this drill can absolutely help over exaggerating, staying through the ball, stopping right here. But the problem again with the younger guys is the bat is usually too heavy. So if they're doing it or they're using their bat and they're choking up, a lot of the times they're taking swings slower than normal, right? And they're having a hard time controlling that bat. They're just doing the drill for the sake of the drill and they're really not getting any benefit out of it. So what I was thinking about, what I was working on, tweaking with was a drill with this little tool right here. It's called the rope bat. And the reason I like this, a couple reasons. One is because you can't get long. With this one hand, like if you're doing uh, swings with a uh, younger guy and they're getting this bat, a lot of the times you'll see their hand get out and they're like yanking this bat through and they're getting long, they're getting disconnected, right? Not a great way to go about this drill. With this, you cannot do that. You can't. You absolutely can't. If you get disconnected and get like a big load here and you go to swing, this thing's going to fly off your shoulder, come out and around. There's no way to hit the ball, right? The other thing this thing is great for is having barrel awareness. Right, with the one-handed bat, you've got the whole length of the barrel. Now, this is, this is actually a cool training tool. This is not a one-handed bat. Uh, this is just an overload, underload, bat speed training bat. I'm just using this for purposes of the video. So this, this is an awesome bat. I'm not talking bad about this bat. But for using a regular bat, 
if the player starts to get big here, gets really loaded out and around, they're getting disconnected. There's no way that they're gonna hit this ball with this sweet spot right here, right? The other reason I like using this versus a bat is because if they're going slow, if they're just using a heavy bat and they're just kind of going slow and going through it, this barrel, they can't do that with this. If they try, the weight, the gravity of this is gonna take over and the barrel's gonna dump, right? The barrel's gonna get dumped. So if I'm just kind of going through it, the barrel's just gonna, the, the gravity's just gonna kind of take over. And it's not gonna be good. So I gotta be quick like Bregman, right? I gotta be short in the back and I gotta be quick to contact, right? The third reason I really love using the rope bat with this drill is because I can work on that over exaggeration out in front and I can almost do that deceleration, the follow through deceleration. You could work on this like here, because with a normal bat, when you get to this position, the weight is just in a straight line, in a stick, it's a bat, right? With this, it's almost pulling you, it wants to continue, right? So you have to have that extra deceleration and kind of stop that rotation and pulling you through. So that's what I really like about this drill. Let me give it a shot live right here, see if I can do it. One other thing I like to do with this drill is, I don't know if you see my catch and crush hitting drill, but I like to, I used to throw a ball to the player, they would catch it right here, and they would keep this closed. So they kind of have that feel of keeping the chest forward like Bregman does in his videos, right? So I like to have the player right here, kind of set the sights right through their wrist, right through here down to that ball, and they're focusing on keeping the shoulder close. So when they're swinging, they're swinging like this. So it's almost that uh, decelerated, follow through right so it looks a little something like this see if I can hit it before the wind blows it off right here get set up not a big load I'm short to it short to it quick to it and stop the follow through when I get out in front that's what you're trying to do in the drill not a bad shot right there by coach um, one thing you can also focus on is trying not to let this hit your back I felt it a little bit on my back right so I might have let it pull me out a little bit more another thing you can focus on is where your arm your front arm ends when you finish that drill i kind of had it pulled off so when i look back i'm off of my line i really want to stay focused on staying right here right now that time i kind of followed all the way through and hit my back what i really want to focus on is here over exaggerate decelerate the follow through and i want to know what you guys think about it leave a comment down below bregman um thank you so much for the videos information is golden if you want one of these i'll send you one just hit me up let me know what you guys think what are you guys working on with your players like if you're a coach or a dad or whatever what's your young hitter struggling with let me know i'd love to make some more videos and uh, i'll talk to you guys in the comment section down below thank you so much we'll see you in the next one